Representative Katie Porter weighed in after swimmer Riley Gaines says she was punched by transgender activists at a recent speaking engagement. I believe the language actually was that she was struck twice. Let's take a look at what Porter had to say. We talked about people, you know, becoming, using things to kind of get likes and get clicks. That's not what she's doing. It's I mean, not? I, I've got no truck for right against personally, but all I've seen her do is stand up for women's rights to fairness and equality. But she okay, has so she, she actually competed oh. against Leah Thomas, and it was obviously unfair. Leah Thomas won one of the races in the NCAA championships by 50 seconds against a bunch of biological females who simply couldn't keep up. That cannot be right. It and cannot be fair. That is something that I trust... I think our sporting bodies should be dealing with. And by the way, Riley is speaking up for herself, and that is her prerogative, and I respect her free speech. I think she's speaking okay, up for but- pretty much every female athlete in the world. And now here is Bill Maher weighing in. Wasn't that the point of Title IX? Title IX in the early 70s was yeah. something that was a, it was a major event in feminism, that we finally have this law that says at colleges, right, and I think high schools too, but definitely colleges, women, women's sports have to be given equal to men's sports so that women aren't getting, you know, and this led to the WNBA and lots of other stuff. This seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to be so many instances, I think, where wokeness is the opposite of what I grew up as liberalism. Right. Liberalism and, was let's give and, the women an equal shot. And meanwhile, this is let, let's and meanwhile, put a male in the in the swimming pool right, with cra- the women. I don't get it. It's crazy. And meanwhile, trans people who genuinely want to compete at athletics and swimming or whatever it may be, they they're the ones who are suffering here. They need to be found a way to compete fairly and justly. Well, what's your answer then? I think there's one or two answers. I think they either compete against their biological sex, as many of them did before, or you create an entirely new category. For a transgender athlete. In response to this conversation, Riley Gaines tweeted, Hey, Rep. Katie Porter, I'm not speaking up for myself. I'm done playing sports. I'm not fighting for me. I'm actually supposed to be in dental school this year, but I've changed my life plans because I see what's at stake if someone doesn't fight for the present and next generation. I thought Pierce Morgan made some reasonable comments that the vast majority of people watching and indeed in the country are going to agree with, which is that it's not anything to belittle uh, transgender people um, and they should be able to compete. But... We need to create um, different um, leagues for them, just as there were different leagues for between men and women at competitive levels for a reason, because there is a clear difference in athletic ability, not at every level of competition. Um, yeah, I, I coached uh, I coached grade school track for a while, fourth through eighth grade. You can let all the fourth graders and the fifth graders run against each other. That's fine. Uh, but by the time when it gets to the older kids, you start to see incredible differences in athletic ability. Actually, there's a period where the girls are all very fast, and then girls change, they develop, and in high school, they, be, they become better long distance, but not at all competitive with the men at uh, short distance races. And, like I, I saw it happen year after year. <laughs> it's It can't be denied. It's, yeah. it's true. So I've been having some really robust conversations with um, people on my call-in show, and some of the callers who call in are trans. And we've been talking about how different the in-group conversation among trans people is versus the kind of lines and the kind of limits of conversation that have been established in the public sphere. And what I was told, and again, this is a small group of people, I'm sure there's many, the diversity of opinion among trans people, but that this women's and sports issue has become kind of a albatross around the neck of a larger movement, and that there isn't, um, that there is a much more willingness to acknowledge the reason why we have sex segregated sports, not gender, but sex segregated sports, um, the kind of Mm-hmm. biological realities of sexual dimorphism, despite there being, of course, intersex people and people who fall in between. The reason that we have divided sports the way we have done, as Bill Maher pointed out, is to allow women to have the opportunity to compete at a collegiate level and at these higher, more competitive levels of sports. And there was a lot of openness in that conversation that I was having with trans people about whether or not we should model the, the kind of um, sports segregation based on ability that we have in other contexts, whether it is um, the Paralympics or sex segregated sports or the Special Olympics, et cetera, and either have, as Piers Morgan, uh, Piers Morgan was saying, separate leagues for trans people or allow people to compete against people of the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if that 
conversation can be had in the mainstream without a presumption that people are antagonistic to the broader rights of trans folks. I think it is the case there's a lot of defensiveness, because I do think there are folks who are trying to use this as a wedge issue to also limit the rights of trans people in other contexts. And we've seen hundreds of bills promulgated this year alone that go much farther than mm-hmm sports to try to limit the rights that trans people have under the law. So I understand why there's that defensiveness, but it does sometimes feel like dying on this particular hill Mm -hmm. is a distraction. Maybe that's too strong a word, but is one, not reflective of what a lot of trans people think, and two, is a opportunity for folks who do want to ramp up antagonism for trans people to do so because they're being made to look very kind of like um, mm-hmm. Overly, you know, almost irrational in this one area. Well, and I, I believe in in many in in some sports arrangements, it's because this it's a one way kind of segregation. Like women, like I believe in in professional golf, right? Women can compete if there. Like, every now and then, there is one capable of being somewhat competitive, and that's fine. But you don't have you know, men can't flood the LPGA. Right. Like that's it's. So it's reflective of of a basic reality that everyone understands and that is not controversial. Right. So to, to give some context as to why I think some people might be a little sensitive about Rayleigh Gaines in this particular instance. So the reason why Rayleigh Gaines is in the news is that about a year ago, she competed in a NCAA championship against Leah Thomas. And in that race, Leah Thomas, who's famously a trans swimmer, and in that race, Leah Thomas and Riley Gaines tied for fifth place. So this wasn't a case where the trans swimmer beat everybody out. Leah came in fifth, and so did Riley Gaines. The issue was that they shared the podium for the fifth place spot, and because they'd only printed or created one fifth place trophy, they let Leah hold it and told Riley she was getting hers in the mail. It seems that she was slighted by that. Maybe all of this could have been avoided if they had simply let Riley hold hold the trophy and send Leah's in the mail. I can imagine being pretty frustrated by that, given the circumstances. But I can imagine being frustrated by that, regardless of who I tied with, whether they were a a trans swimmer or a cis woman swimmer. You know what I mean? Okay, I think the... (laughs) Well, I think the additional component here we're talking about. Well, that's what that's what people are asking. Yes. I think that part of it is like there's now this implication that well, is she really mad that she tied and didn't get the trophy, or is this being used no, I as think an she's excuse? She's mad she had to compete against someone who had advantages by nature of their biological sex. And, and I think that's perfectly fair. I'm just trying to explain the context of why I think some people might be defensive, specifically when they're engaging mm-hmm. with Riley Gaines as being the one who's instigating this conversation. And I think elsewhere in the interview, um, Katie Porter accused Riley of doing this for clicks and attention, which, you know, it's not an argument that I think Katie Porter should be making. But I do think the reason why people are so defensive is they have that perception that Riley Gaines, by her own admission, you know, should be a dental school, but is focusing on this issue. You know, many conservative outlets have made uh, you know, really platformed her and made her kind of a hero of this thing. And there was a perception, I'm not saying it's accurate, but there is a perception that this is about having a, a totem for a broader campaign against quote unquote transgenderism, as Matt Walsh says, he wants to exterminate them or, or whatever you, word he used in that, transgenderism. Uh, transgenderism, and, yeah. And, and all of that. that yeah. yeah. I mean, she's speaking out about an issue she's very close to and passionate about that, again, most people agree with. Now, she got met with um, this protesting at uh, San Francisco State University, where she spoke there. Um, According to the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, which is a watchdog group that monitors disruptions of speech and so things like that. They said the event was substantially disrupted by the protesters. She was not able to finish her remarks. They shut off the lights. They rushed her. There, there's some video of scuffling. You don't see in the video footage the part where she says she was struck or whatever it was. Yeah. But, you know, you do see some rough mob-like behavior. And then she was, uh, she says, and, and you can see the video footage of this, she's in a room and she can't leave because the protesters are outside it and won't let her leave. And then there's like a lengthy, this goes on for three hours, a lengthy negotiation with the campus police and um, and an administrator there trying to, uh, you know, what what could we do to, they're talking with the protesters. It's a hostage negotiation. It's pretty ugly in my my view. Um, and some of the some of the, uh, the hostage takers, the protesters are like, well, give us, give each of us $10 and then we'll leave. Like it, it even got to that level. Yeah, I don't think that you have to defend anything or take a position on anything 
anything that happened one way or the other in that exchange, to want there to be substantive support for the broad rights of trans people. And this is what's so frustrating about this conversation. There are bills in I believe it's Montana. Uh, there are bills in Tennessee that would go as so far as to make drag illegal, that would limit the ability of adults to get uh, gender-affirming care, that would intercede between a doctor and their patient um, in, in the medical decisions that they make. And whatever we think of all kinds of medical decisions, whether it's plastic mm -hmm. surgeries or big booty but BBLs, whatever they call those butt lifts everybody's what? getting, and all of these things that I might have one way feeling about or another, the question is whether or not issues like this are being used to shoehorn other issues through. And that being the case, whether there is an obligation of the trans community to figure out what, what to do about the reality well, of that. these protesters can go protest some of that stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll meet you down there, and we can all protest together and leave this Well, I think they have the free speech right to, to counter protest. Well, they have to, to counter protest, not to disrupt the event. Which they well, that did. is. I mean, that's what protests are. They're disruptive, but not to. No, her. not to. Yeah. Well, no, and not also not to shout over the person so they can't speak, or else that, that's the heckler's veto. I mean, that's so. Like very I said, I, I really, see, but this is part campuses. of the problem. Like, I. This is the issue. Are we ever going to be allowed to talk about these other trans issues? I, I'm, I'm like com completely conceding that. Like. You, if the protest is bad, you guys don't like the protest. The protest is bad. Don't don't assault people. Like that's not that hard. What's hard is what to do about the fact that trans people have been banned, for, or they're in the process of being banned from getting the basic medical care that everybody else in the country gets to have. And so this is a conversation that the trans community needs to have about what the lines are on this particular issue. Is it appropriate? to talk in terms of sexual dimorphism and biological sex, is there gonna be a presumption that using terms like that is transphobic or turf-like? Is the existence of Title IX in sex segregated sports, are we really saying that that's in the realm of being a turf um, to believe there is a value in having a place for people who are assigned female at birth to be able to compete given the physical disadvantages that we as a society have decided exist and that do exist? Um, and can we figure out ways, whether it's metrics of, uh, that, that trans women can meet that actually ensure that the biological advantages aren't there anymore? And the way the Olympics has tried to do and say, well, if your hormone levels are this and et cetera, that you've been transitioning for this amount of time, then you can compete with cis women or in the alternative, alternative leagues. I think but that's, I think, where the conversation needs to be, how to make it fair as opposed to kind of assuming that any and all conversation in this realm is transphobic. I don't know that that's necessarily helping the interests of the trans community more broadly. Not that it's my position to say, but that's an outsider's observation. Mm. Well, all right, tomorrow on Rising, we'll be back same time, same place to bring you all the biggest news of the day. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.